In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, seat of wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we are again at Advent. Advent is the beginning of the liturgical year, as you are aware, but whenever we get to the beginning of something, it means we're at the end of something. And an entire year has passed by again, an entire liturgical year. How much of it have we wasted? How much have we profited? How far forward have we gone? Or how far have we regressed? For as you know, in the spiritual life, there is no standing still. Forwards or backwards, they're the only directions, the only options we have. And so while it is always useful for the soul, profitable for the soul to do an examination of, the, of conscience every day, at the end of the year, and, and even the end of the liturgical year, it's profitable to examine how we have cooperated with the graces that God has offered us during the last year. Hopefully, you have progressed. Hopefully, you haven't, or hopefully you haven't regressed at all. But whatever is the case, God in his goodness has given us another year. We don't know if we're going to get the full one. We don't know when he's going to call us. But he's at least given us the now. He's given us this new year, as we do with the, the secular new year, to make new resolutions, to make decisions uh, for the good of our soul. And out of his goodness, he starts the year, the church starts her year, with a season which is in its spirit penitential. Advent is a penitential season, hence we wear purple like Lent. Hence we don't sing the Gloria during the Sunday Mass because it is a penitential season. Different spirit than Lent, of course. In Lent, we don't even say the Alleluia. But in Advent, it's still a time of prayer, penance, and almsgiving. What's that got to do with Our Lady? Advent is, is, is the uh, preeminent Marian season of the year. Because what's happening in Advent? Our Lady is about to give birth to our Lord. We are waiting for Mary to give birth to Jesus. Of course, we're waiting for Jesus to come along. We're not forgetting him at all. It's all about Jesus. But it's Christmas is the feast, is the festival, the celebration, when we remember that someone, and that someone is Our Lady, who gave birth to him. And so during the season of Advent, the church asks us, doesn't just suggest, but somewhat forcefully asks us, not forcefully, the church never forces us to do anything, but strongly suggests that we do what Our Lady was doing at this time. What was she doing? She was being pregnant. She was preparing for the coming of Jesus. Jesus was developing within her, was growing within her. And so that's what we're supposed to be doing during the season. A great way to start the year is to prepare for Jesus to be born within us, to be born from us, within our hearts. And so we take this time to do extra prayer and penance, especially Marian prayer, to ask her, Our Lady, how to be better, if you will, mothers in a certain sense, to the developing Christ within us. To be mindful, much more mindful of him. You can imagine, some of you may have heard this before, if at this time Our Lady was eight months pregnant. For any of you who have been eight months pregnant, know that you cannot forget that you're pregnant. There's this huge thing in front of you, which is a person. You know that someone is coming. It's unforgettable. It's not like you'd wake up in the morning, oh, I forgot I was pregnant. We need to be like that during Advent in a certain sense, except maybe without the belly. 
we need to move forward and remembering that Christ is coming and we need to remember him at every moment. Hence, we imitate Our Lady, this kind of spiritual pregnancy, if you will, the spiritual development of Christ within us. Hence, it's a Marian uh, season. Hence, she is the model um, of our life at this time. We also, though, by that penance, penance is as a means that we detach ourselves from the things of this world, the things which are passing. And it has other, other uses as well, of course, making reparation for our sins as well. But this detachment is so important. And again, it is Our Lady who is the, the model for us in this way. First of all, as we know, according to the tradition of the church, Our Lady was what they call the temple virgin from a very young age. And by God's will, she left the temple to marry St. Joseph. Of course, she kept her virginity always. She is a perpetual virgin, virgin dogma as a dogma of the church, dur uh, before, during, and after. And yet she gave up this, this work, if you will, this joy to be in the temple because God wanted something else from her. She became detached from it. Even something that is good, seemingly good, because God had something better in mind. She gave up, if you will, uh, the comfort, however comfortable it actually was, of being in Nazareth at her home to give birth. She went with Joseph to, to Bethlehem and gave birth in a stable. In a stable. The only other person I know of that willingly, that willingly did that, according to tradition with a small t this time, was the mother of St. Francis. Apparently, he also was born in a stable. His mother wanted to imitate the Blessed Virgin Mary. And then later on, of course, after the birth, she even gave up her homeland for Christ. As she, she and St. Joseph, she followed St. Joseph and fled to Egypt to protect the child Jesus. And so this uh, spirit, if you will, of penance, of detachment of Our Lady, we must strive to imitate in this season of Advent. But if we concentrate maybe a little more on this whole aspect of the fact that Jesus was in fact born in a stable. Again, if you can, for, for those of you who have given birth, if it's hard enough as it is, and maybe, I, obviously I haven't experienced it myself, but... To have to do it in a stable, to have, to all, the, all you have to give to your baby as its first crib is a food trough, a manger. The only heating are the breaths of the ass and the ox. It's not something that you choose. And so we look at this great mystery that God himself chose to be born in a stable. And Our Lady, she never said, no, excuse me, Lord, you know, like St. Peter did. No, I will never let that happen when he says, you know, the Son of Man will be given up and crucified and die. No, she said, Lord, if that's what you want, I, I don't know, you know how much she understood. I'm sure she understood better than anyone else could have. But she said, your will be done. So God was born in a stable. And I've mentioned this before to some of you. You can be sure that that stable was extremely clean. St. Joseph was there. I'm sure he made sure that it was the cleanest stable ever. But nevertheless, a stable it was. And from that, we can take two important meditations. Firstly, don't be discouraged if all you have to, have to offer to God is the stable of your soul and your heart. He doesn't mind that. As long as it's clean, he doesn't mind if it's poor. Because the second thing that we need to take from that is that it does need to be poor. God didn't want to be born. Jesus didn't want to be born in a palace. He doesn't want our hearts filled with the treasures of this world. He wants us to be poor in spirit. He wants us to, to be detached from all these things. Then and only then can he be truly born in our hearts. Certainly Our Lady understood this. Otherwise I think we might have heard some protests on her lips to be, have to give birth, a, a miraculous birth, even though it was in a stable. And so as we do our examination of conscience for the year during this Advent, and as we do our penance, we need to be thinking about these things. We know how poor we truly are in the things that are important, the graces and the love and the virtues. But we also, we need to be extra poor in our detachment in the sense that all these things of the world, 
We need to pray to God to be ready to give them up. It doesn't mean you have to go live on the street, clearly. But to love God more than you love these things. Clearly, this is a very Franciscan spirit. But it's not just Franciscan. St. Francis was trying to live the gospel. This is the gospel spirit. If we are attached to the things of this world, all the less we will be attached to God. So in this Marian season, this season of Advent, I mean, we're even wearing purple, which is almost a blue kind of, kind of colorblind, I suppose, but nevertheless, it's heading towards blue. This Marian season, let us not forget the example that she gave us. She is the preeminent member of the church and the mother, and the mother of God himself. Let us therefore make ourselves rich in virtue, as St. Francis says, but poor in the things of this world and the attachment to the things of this world. Not all of you are called to take a vow of poverty where you're not allowed to own anything, where you give up the right to own things, but all of you, all of us, are called to have that poverty of spirit, to be completely detached from the things of this world. Only then can Jesus be truly born in our hearts. He will come in some way or other anyway. He wants to be with us. But the more we have in our hearts, the more clutter, the less room there is for him. Let us therefore clear it out. Let us ask Our Lady to do some rearrangements. I don't know about you, when I was still in the world and I had a house, if I made the mistake of giving my mother the keys and I went away for a weekend, when I came back, the house would be completely different. Clean, different, everything moved around. Our Lady does the same thing, but you can, tr I can trust my mum too, but you can trust Our Lady. She will do the right thing. Let her clean your house, the house of your soul and your heart, to prepare it for the coming of the King this Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.